Hi guys, this is ADC. It's been a long time since the last video, so I apologize for that. I'm having a rough period at work and with the study, so I apologize if this month I will be and I was um, not regular with my uploads. So, <laughs> I have a lot, a lot, a lot to cover. Uh, so today I'm gonna try a little experiment. I will review a ton of cards. I don't know the number, exactly exact number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cards in the same video. Uh, it will be a speed review. Uh, under one minute for each card. I will not read through the uh, to the skill set. I will not read uh, their output and their roles. I will only comment on uh, what I think uh, they can uh, can achieve in the metagame, if I like it, them or not, and their principal uh, synergies and so on. So um, I will start with Sinfire. Sinfire is the um, special release for the monkey ear. Uh, so it is um, a strange hero with a strange skill set. You will find her in the in the chest uh, at random one time every four uh, every four times. So basically, uh, you will have an entire month to complete her. So she is very very particular. I don't think she will be meta game changing. She is solid. She has this crazy fireball and this dodge strength combo. Uh, she's very solid overall, a lot of dodges and a lot of damage and minus damage. So, very good. I don't think she will be a uh, metagame right now, but she has synergies with um, the Berserkers and the Beasts and also uh, with Hime uh, for uh, Kotobas. So, it's good. Not a great hero, but good. Next one, Mana Scale, the XEX of the week. The previous week. Uh, very, very good. A powerful mage, the first spellbreaker of his guild. Um, great fireball plus thorn uh, combo here. She is, uh, he is um, a nightmare for multi-hitters and also a pretty good hero overall. Uh, great, great output. Uh, very, very solid. And also this spellbreaker here, very useful in the metagame. So, very good. I've used him uh, all all the, the week since, since today. So, and I've made a lot of points, so I think he will be meta for sure. And I expect a lot of him. Very, very good. The, my favorite EX in a while. So, very, very good. Then, okay, the Avalonia patch. Avalonia patch was last week. A lot of heroes to cover. So, let's dive in. Lady Jane. Lady Jane was um, incredibly uh, underused. She was uh, a bad, bad, bad hero. Now she has a crazy skill set. She resembles um, quite a bit um, Okandari's style in the way that uh, she can go all, all yellows or red and blues. And she has an overall good output and uh, a great uh, utility with this All Purify 2. She is still a difficult hero to play, so I don't think she will be a real, real um, metagame hero right now. Just because there, um, there are a lot of better choices as for uh, priests. She has this all purify 2 that will come in handy if the metagame shifts towards minus damage or um, again uh, frostbite and powder maybe. But right now I think I'll prefer to her um, Lady Elite, even though his all purify is just one and not two. But very very overall um, more solid Lady Elite. So. Lady Jane is good, is playable, but I don't think she is meta-worthy uh, for the Master League, at least right now. But I like her. So, let's go with Aetz, King of Avalonia. Um, a minor change here. Um, Eric took his shield and turned into a more powerful strength buff and a, noble, a, a tiny noble hit. Overall, Aetz was a good hero. Even before the patch, he had this crazy, crazy um, shield in the first skill that was uh, not synergic with his repost count, so it was bad. Um, getting rid of this um, this shield was more than enough. Now Aetz is solid. He, he has a great damage output uh, alongside others, uh, Avalonians, of course. He's a heavy hitter and has a utility um, role with his all repost 2. Repost is a minor buff, but still a buff, so 
Ah, it's very good. Um, minor change, but I like it. Um, not sure if it can be a metagame card. I think Avalonians right now are more of a niche guild. Uh, they are suited for maybe Champion League, not, not for Master League. So, Angorand. Angorand, I'm not so excited about him. He received um, a minor buff. Uh, he is solid, he has a lot of um, output, so as you can see, uh, he can go full noble with 3000, 2900, so he is very powerful, but I don't like his skill set a lot, he is not so versatile, um, he has just one way uh, to be played, and also he is very weak to smite, and that's not, not, not so good. So. Um, I like him, uh, he does not synergize of course with Dakiza, but he synergizes with um, King Aetz of course and um, the Queen, so he is a perfect uh, good uh, good hero for the um, mono Avalonian team, but um, overall I don't think he's a metagame worthy card, but just good, even for um, new buys, it is a really really good card for new buys. Miria. Miria is the, the card I liked the least in the in the Avalonian patch. And that's because of her third skill here. This double blue, I hate this double blue. I don't think Miria is um, uh, is versatile enough, I think. Uh, his role is a bit too rigid. She needs this double blue to really shine. So I think it is a luck-based card. I didn't like it like her before and I don't like her now even though it, she is uh, of course better than before and um, with a bit of luck she can be uh, really 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 a powerhouse but I don't like her I, I don't like this kind of heroes based all on luck so not my style even though yeah, she can be pretty um, pretty effective with this spellbreaker here and this crazy double uh, blue roll here noble heal 502 for it 2050 uh, 250 so very very good uh, great output but not very versatile and also luck based so then Sevilat. Sevilat was the um, most welcome surprise for me uh, in this patch um, now his blessing count is doubled so finally priests have um, at least a good um, a good buffer, not a crazy buffer, not a game defining, a meta game defining buffer, but a good buffer. And also, his overall uh, standalone um, uh, performance is better now with his shock three, three times strength and smite two. So he is better. He is better and more uh, useful. Now, Sevillet is a proper buffer. You can use him in a competitive team. It is good. It also. Um, pump a lot of um, Avalonians, so Mono Priest Avalonian decks are uh, available right now, uh, so I like him very much, he's, he's good, he's really really better on his standalone side and also you know, on, on his buffer side, very good. Thunder King, Thunder King is my favorite card of this patch, he is a crazy output guy, a powerhouse, he is ignorant and <laughs> all focused on lightning and dealing a ton of damage to your opponent. His style is predict predictable and also easy to counter. Uh, he suffers dodges and he suffers uh, very much scarab and other things, but he is solid. Man, he has this crazy double altered rebel rainbow 1 and 2, 3000. <laughs> that's, that's really, really uh, crazy. He has an, an output, a uh, stellar output, so I like him very much. He also is a uh, Gwemelit. So he synergizes with um, Andriana, maybe. So very, very good. He suffers, of course, uh, even uh, Purify uh, because his output is largely um, based on the lightning he left after he attacks. So he's very good. Uh, Thunder King is a one massive behemoth stated here, and uh, I completely agree. It's my favorite card of this patch. Very, very good. I don't think he will be meta right now just because uh, the meta game is more. Uh, strategic, strategic and tactical, and Thunder King is not strategic, not tactical, it is brutal. So, as a card for new buys, it, it will be uh, invaluable for new buys, but uh, for the Master League, maybe it is too, um, too raw, maybe to, to see, yeah, to no, not so, not so tactical, not so good in, in, a, in a 
particularly complex environment, but I like him very much. Crazy, crazy output, very, very good. Isild. Isild uh, is really better, um, a um, tiny buff here, but a uh, buff that counts. Now all her reds turns into swords, and she has this Noble Lightning 300. She is based all on Lightning, just like Thunder King, so she is the Thunder Girl, <laughs> you can say. She synergizes good with, uh, with Astria also. She is very good, she has this crazy Lightning 360 if attacker, very very good. She synergizes with all of her, her guild, so she synergizes with Aetz, she synergizes with the Queen, and so very good, uh, very versatile, uh, more versatile than uh, Thunder King, maybe, even if she is less strong, she has a less da damage output, but not, not something to uh, undervalue, she, she is very good, she is vulnerable to Smite, of course, uh, she has this strength uh, augment and also vulnerable to terror and minus damage, but that's that's okay. So is uh, overall very good? I don't think uh, for any Avalonian here they will be part, um, metagame material li right now. The metagame right now is very very complex and um, based on plus damage and spell breakers and uh, scarab. So uh, heroes difficult to play and that requires a really really a careful planning. So. Uh, Avalonians are solid, they are, um, they are good, they have great output, but they are predictable and they are not so flexible and versatile uh, in the, their style. So, uh, so Isil fit, fits every Avalonian deck, she is very good. Also, she is the only pure attacker of her guild, since the noble skills um, are better in defense, uh, usually. So, so, she is very good and very useful. Anunto. Um, so she, uh, he is the um, new uh, release for the Avalonians, the special release for the patch. He is a priest. Um, so he's good. Uh, I, yeah, I'm a bit, um, a bit uh, confused about this guy. So when I first looked at him, I said, "Oh yeah, it's very, very good." But then I tried it, and I'm, I was not so happy. So he is. He is overall a good hero, but I don't think he is uh, strong enough to be um, to be played even in a mono Avalonian deck. There are a lot of Avalonians that are stronger than this guy. He has a lot of noble hits. Uh, this noble fireball here is very good. This strange damage plus two hundred and fifty on his third skill, um, Absalom style, that I don't like very much. Uh, so he is useful in a in a mono priest Avalonian deck. Of course, you want him, but I think you have a lot of better options uh, for Avalonians also. So good, but not great. Um, great potential, consistent, of course, but um, he suffers from dodges. And so, the best thing about his skill set is this first shock 350 and purify one, a, a powerful shock purify combo that uh, gives him um, a great. Um, a great matchup with um, against uh, minus damage dealers like hate, for example. So the nerf to Cochrane was needed. Uh, Eric took um, eliminated his first um, trigger. Um, Cochrane was a bit too much, I think. Uh, we all loved the Ice Elves season, where Ice Elves were all over the place. Uh, it was a great shift in the metagame and Cochrane was simply outstanding. It was the best card released in the, in the patch for um, Ice Elves, as I said in the dedicated video, but it was, um, it was too much. Right now he is balanced, he's still a great hero. Um, Ice Elves are still playable, are still good, but now, uh, right now they are not OP. Uh, Cochrane, I think Cochrane was OP, so this change was needed. Even though I liked uh, I liked the um, I um, mono decks in the uh, or previous season, so I think he is good right now. He is he has just the right amount of strength and of power, and so right now um, I selves are not all over the place again, but they are still metagame worthy and still Cochrane is metagame worthy. So uh, a good job. Right now, oh, Valerius. Well, Valerius was one of the um, last uh, Monday releases. Uh, so he has this old Bulwark 490. 
he has a great output as for um, a minor buffer he has a great output um, similar to Gakusha maybe uh, about his um, about his uh, buff here all bulwark for 490 is really useful only against spell breakers and heavy hitters with powder like for example Pukos like for example Armada and, and so on and for critical users so it is not um, a major buff it is a niche buff um, more like a support for the team but Valerius is very good he has a, um, a great output and synergizes with um, with a, the other Avalonians, he synergizes with Sapient. He uses very good this uh, rune here with his runic hit, and also uh, he's a Gwem, so he synergizes with other Gwem elites. So he's good. I don't think uh, I, I haven't seen him in the meta game right now, just because he is a, a niche buffer, as I said. Um, but that's okay. It's not because of his uh, a lack of strength on his side. I think his design is good uh, he has the right amount of uh, output and the right place it's just that his uh, old bulwark is um, is a buff that will come in handy in specific situations so i think valerius will pop out in specific occasions when the metagame shifts towards multi hitter and um, heavy hitter sorry uh, with critical or powder or uh, a lot of spell breakers so he's a counter to these things and i think we will see him even though not so um, consistently very good overall. Seed Ironhead. Uh, Seed Ironhead is um, a <laughs> crazy card, really, really funny to play. This old Berserk 10 to Pirates is very good. Um, he synergizes a lot with Astria with, for his uh, third skill here. So, uh, what I think about Seed is he is funny. He, um, Pirates needed a Berser Berserk uh, buffer, so he is good. And he synergizes with Astria, that's also good. You can think of um, Powd um, sorry, Pirates, uh, Astra decks with Seed, maybe Maldorets, maybe uh, Helena, and so on. So, and Seed, of course, and Astra. So that's 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 good. I don't think Seed will uh, will be a meta game card right now, just because his Berserk um, buff is not enough to bring um, real cohesion to his guild. I think. Um, some uh, some pirates are the best um, heroes in the entire in the entire game, but right now as as a guild they don't have any chance to have a mono pirate deck in the meta game, and Sid doesn't change that. So he is good. I'm happy he was released. He is funny. I will play him maybe in some crazy gameplay next week, but right now I don't think Sid is a meta game worthy card. Very good of overall, but not. Uh, not great. Oh, Zehani. Zehani is uh, a crazy card. I was I love Scarab, so I love this girl here. Zehani is a powerful metagame worthy card right from the start. Very good. A lot of synergies. This uh, shock count here uh, makes her um, impermeable to minus damage. This uh, Scarab in the first skill is very good. Very cost efficient with blessing 100. She is good against early um, early heavy hitters and also in defense you can be good against uh, second skill heavy hitters so very good of course um, as every every scarab hero she is more like a standalone she does not synergize with a lot of cards so that's a, that's her con side she is not so uh, good with um, other buffers she do does not synergize with dodge she does not synergize with the shield and other um, and other buffs so she is a pure standalone and also she is very difficult to use she requires a careful matchup careful planification uh, planning so uh, very good meta game she's all over the place i encounter her in the in the ranked games uh, very often she's very good very strong but um, keep in mind she is difficult to play she's very she needs careful planning and uh, each Scarab card has the same mechanics and characteristics. She cannot be um, used uh, without thinking and with uh, all the opponents. She needs to be coupled uh, very, very carefully. So I like her. Very straightforward metagame card like every Scarab card uh, right now. So very good. I like her. I'll conclude this video with Nard. Nard was, um, was a release uh, for 
two weeks ago maybe or three weeks ago I don't know <laughs> how much time is passed since my last video I don't know um, so Nard is um, uh, a strange hero for me uh, his buff is invaluable I don't think uh, dodge is enough to make the zeal guild consistent but I think dodge was needed and Nard brings a little um, cohesion to the guild I've seen a lot of um, Zeal decks with Terrific and Lunatic and maybe the Psychologist with Nard and they are good, they are doing good. I don't think they are um, top master class decks but they can be uh, effective in Champions League for sure and maybe even, even in the lower master league so Nard brings cohesion to a guild that has little to no cohesion at all, at all. so she's good uh, but I think she is weak. So her buff is very very good. As for the rest of her, her skill set, I don't think she is good enough. Uh, she loses uh, most of the time. Of course, she synergizes with um, plus damage with Bloodsword and um, with Astria also. But um, overall, I think she is uh, pretty weak. So um, very good. Um, a meta game card, yes, she is a meta game card just because her buff is so precious to Zeals. That you will play him her, even in metagame worthy teams, but she is weak. So keep in mind, uh, probably when you send Nard, she will lose. Uh, uh, however, if you want to play her um, offensively and to win, you have to buff her with Bloodsword or with Astria, uh, of course. So she has to receive uh, minus damage. She also is synergic with uh, Artrezil. Uh, she has this hit 500 that synergizes with the critical. So that could be could be good. Um, she is vulnerable to spellbreaker. So no, sorry, not spellbreaker, but to smite because of the strength uh, buff here. I don't think this strength buff was really needed. So I don't like her very much as uh, for the design's um, point of view. But I think she is important to her guild, and so uh, she ha she is she has metagame worthy potential. So very good. So I don't know really uh, how much time this video uh, will be. I hope my speed review uh, was not um, bad and I hope you will enjoy, enjoy this video. I will return to make videos, I promise you. I will not promise you, I will be uh, con consistent and um, on, in the next two weeks. So February uh, is a crazy month for me right now, but I will return and I will uh, start again making my videos so uh, keep keep the keep up the good work and subscribe to the channel and expect more so as for today adc is out